Okay, I was, uh, so I was waiting for this. Yesterday we heard Biden's story that his uncle was eaten by cannibals in Papua New Guinea after being shot down uh, during World War II. Great story, great story, uh, completely made up, you know, almost certainly false, but, but uh, like everything else Biden says, false, but, but also a good story. I was waiting for the inevitable follow-up where we hear from people who are, are very troubled by this racist claim about cannibalism. That's, that's the part we knew was coming. And um, now we have it. This is from the Daily Mail. Outraged Papua New Guinea academics have slammed President Joe Biden for his unacceptable suggestion that his uncle was eaten by cannibals in the country after his plane was shot down during World War II. Biden implied on two occasions Wednesday that his uh, maternal uncle was eaten by cannibals in Papua New Guinea. Okay. Um, Historically, cannibalism has been reported um, in Papua New Guinea, the Pacific nation that occupies the eastern half of the island of New Guinea. But local academics say that Biden's categorization of the act is very offensive. So they're not taking issue with, like, yes, there was cannibalism, but he's portraying the cannibalism in a, in a negative light. He's making it, he's making it sound bad, like it's bad to eat people. And that's the problem. Michael Kabuni, a political science lecturer at the University of Papua New Guinea, told The Guardian, cannibalism was previously practiced by some communities in very specific contexts and that locals, quote, wouldn't just eat any white man that fell from the sky. Other analysts branded Biden's claims as unsubstantiated and poorly judged, especially during a time in which the U.S. has been trying to strengthen its ties with Papua New Guinea. Um, outraged academics have slammed President Joe Biden, saying it's unacceptable. Kabuni argued that the uh, Melanesian people, which includes the, uh, those from Papua New Guinea, are very proud and would be offended by Biden's generalization of cannibalism. He explained how cannibalism was not practiced due to a lack of food, but instead as a sign of respect in very specific contexts, such as eating a deceased relative's body to prevent it from decomposing. Uh, so I guess that what we're getting from this is if you ever go to Papua New Guinea, make sure they don't respect you because this is how this is it's bad news. If you're in Papua New Guinea and ever, anyone ever says to you, no, I really respect you. That's that's bad. Get out of there quick. Um, and I love this because, you know, you think at first that the Papua New Guinea academics are going to deny that people from Papua New Guinea would ever engage in cannibalism. But instead, they're saying, well, this is outrageous. We aren't cannibals all the time. We won't eat just anyone who falls out of the sky. We wouldn't have eaten Joe Biden's uncle. Gross. We, we have a much more discerning palate than that. We're very, we're very select. We don't eat anyone who falls out of the sky. We eat some of the people who fall out of the sky, but we, you know, we, we, we're selective about it. Uh, we, we, cannibal, we cannibalize because we love, is what they're saying. Um, and I, I love the, I also love the suggestion that, and in fact, you hear this a lot when, the, when this issue of uh, cannibalism and primitive tribes comes up. What you'll hear is that, well, it was totally different because they weren't doing it out of hunger. But hold on a second. Doesn't that make it worse? Right? You know, if they were st if they were staving off starvation and they and they turned to cannibalism i would still be opposed to that but isn't that ethically speaking arguably more justifiable than doing it when you're not even hungry like you don't you're just doing it ritualistically um you know this is not so this is not uh, what is like what is it the 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 plane crash in the andes with the soccer team in the 70s that resorted to cannibalism because they were starving to death I would think of, uh, when you have that situation compared to a situation where primitive tribesmen are eating people and they're not even hungry, like there's plenty of other, they've got fish in the sea, they've got plenty of fruits and vegetables. Uh, I would think that the latter case is worse, ethically speaking. You know, here at The Daily Wire, we are big fans of entertainment content that isn't trying to push a woke agenda into your living room. That's why you need to go check out The Ballad of Davy Crockett, a pro-America, pro-family, pro-God, PG-13 action adventure that fathers and sons can watch together. In historical fiction from the imagination of writer and director Derek Eslin Purvis, the film explores some of the many myths that helped to create the legend of Davy Crockett. The story begins in 1815 when Crockett's wife falls deathly ill, leaving his young children to survive on their own. The American legend must fight his way back to them across the many perils found in the savage lands of the wild frontier. This film examines the complex 200-year history of European settlers and Native Americans living side by side as neighbors long before Andrew Jackson's Indian, Indian Removal Act. 
It stands in direct opposition to the genocidal colonization story that Hollywood loves to tell, instead exposing the truth that these two groups traded with each other, intermarried, and yes, sometimes fought, as humans do. The Ballad of Davy Crockett is in select theaters and available to buy or rent everywhere you buy movies. If you want to support films that are decent, family-friendly, and push back against Hollywood's anti-American agenda, please support this small independent film. Click the link in the description and go to check out The Ballad of Davy Crockett now. But this is a very awkward conversation for these ac academics, and they don't like it when it comes up because um, one thing you notice when you study the history of first contact, when you read the stories of Westerners encountering primitive tribes around the world, uh, and I've, I've read a lot of these kinds of stories from whether it's the North American continent, uh, South American, somewhere in the Pacific Islands, Africa, whatever. One thing you notice is that cannibalism was actually extremely common in these cultures. Now, I know for me, growing up in school, it, this is this you know the, the reality of uh, these native cultures wasn't we, we didn't go into they didn't go into much detail, but they certainly made it sound like this sort of thing was very very uncommon. It almost never happened, but but then you read about it, you realize that no, it's like it was really common. Uh, cannibalism is a very common thing. Human sacrifice, very, very common. Um, and Western explorers were running into this sort of barbarism all the time. Everywhere they went, they were running into it. And that's very awkward for left-wing academics um, and leftists in general. It's a very awkward thing. And it's awkward because for a few reasons. And one is that it makes it a little bit harder to mourn the loss of some of these cultures uh, to mourn the fact that so many of them were conquered. It's a little bit harder to mourn that when you look at it and you realize that these were bar this was total barbarism that was going on. And, but also, it, since we're talking about context, and you know, when, we, when we discuss these historical events and historical people, and the, uh, the, the, especially the interactions between Westerners and these primitive tribes, uh, the academics will always tell us, well, context, context is key. We need context. We need to have context. We have to have context for the, uh, for the cannibalism that they were engaging in, the human sacrifice. Right? If, they were, if they were sacrificing a child, murdering a child and ripping his heart out, and then eating it, we need, con we need con context to understand it. Well, they want context for that, but they never want context for the other side. They never want any context for the Europeans, the Westerners and their behavior, and their responses. We're not supposed to have any context for that. But what you see is that there was context. That there is a really important context. Because uh, even when Europeans committed atrocities, which sometimes they did, not often, but sometimes they did, even in those circumstances, you see that they were dealing with truly savage and shocking and horrifying Behavior. I mean, they were dealing with things just out of a nightmare, like hellish sights these people were seeing that you can't even imagine what that must be like. And uh, that not only made them angry, but it also led them to the conclusion that these people were not exactly equal to them as Europeans. And it's very, again, very easy for us in the modern day to say, well, that's unacceptable. How the, the, the universal equality of man is, 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 is obvious. Everyone should see it. Actually, it's not obvious. Um, you've, been, you've been raised with that doctrine, so it's obvious to you. But it is a doctrine, and it's a relatively modern one. Not relative. It's a, it's a very modern doctrine. And for most of human history, it was not obvious to anyone. In fact, it never even occurred to anyone for thousands of years that all people are equal in some sort of spiritual sense. Um, it just didn't occur to anyone from any culture. They, they, they never would have said that. And so you've got these Europeans who, who they don't have that, right? They don't have that framework that we all have. We're all born and we're told from birth, everyone's equal. Well, these Europeans were not, they were not told that. They, were, they didn't have that framework any more, than, any more than these other cultures did. And so they're going around the world and they, and they pull up, uh, they, they, they land on some foreign shore and they see naked people run out of the forest engaging in ritualistic cannibalism and human sacrifice. 
is it really hard to understand from their perspective 200 years ago or 300 years ago or longer? Is it really hard to understand why they might have had trouble recognizing the universal equality of man in those circumstances? Is it really that difficult in context? And if we can give context to actual cannibalistic acts and acts of, of, of pure savagery and butchery, if we can give context to that, then why can't we give context to this? Is my has always been my question. Um, anyway, but still, Joe Biden made all that up, so that was originally the topic I ventured away from a little bit. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.